Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel and welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations regarding uh, social, psychological, emotional, and coaching related topics. We do that on in an audio format on a daily basis or as often as we can and hopefully there's something here in the over uh, 470 videos that we've got available for your listening pleasure, something that can be of benefic benefit to you. If I can help you with things like social anxiety and or feeling lonely, which the pandemic has certainly heightened people's sense of loneliness, please feel free to reach out. There's two ways to do that. You can do it through Twitter at PO Perception. You can do it through connecting on a... Uh, uh, on a deeper level uh, through uh, my website as well. Hopefully one of those methods works for you. Um, but today we're going to talk about why you feel so alone or isolated. So the first is social anxiety. Social anxiety can make any person feel alone or isolated because the fear of social interaction causes one to isolate themselves. And then it, it leads to... Um, you know, anger, frustration, further anxiety. In other words, I miss this opportunity. I'm going to miss another one. I'm going to miss another one. And it kind of snow snowballs quickly into a pattern of behavior and habit of behavior that's not productive nor easy to break. The next is disconnection from the people that used to matter to you. Whether the disconnection has been caused by something like COVID or physical distance due to going to college or having a new job or emotional distance due to having different responsibilities, caring for parents, caring for children. There's a, a many reasons that one can feel alone because of disconnection. The amount of um, you know, r responsibility that one has and the burnout related to the nature of um, over-exerting oneself, over-promising, and getting to a place where we're so tapped out with not having enough time to rest in between activities that we burn ourselves out and we feel lonely because we haven't had time to just kind of chill for a while and sometimes doing that throughout the day even if it's 15 minute segments just taking a few minutes to breathe or do some meditation or listen to music or do something that rewires your brain is one of the most important things we can do because without doing that we heighten our chances for burnout and mental health related conditions. The next is unexpected changes, whether they be tragedy related, like somebody passes away or a natural disaster, whether they be an unexpected pregnancy or being laid off. Any sudden change can lead someone to feel alone because the coping and the alteration of how one behaves and relates to the rest of the world can become extremely overwhelming and, and quite challenging at the end of the day. If someone doesn't feel they have a proper or progressive positive meta model for, you know, reaching out, um, they can not have the the relationship they want to with uh, with challenges there, and ultimately it creates a whole bunch and and a lot of unnecessary challenges and problems, and you know. Ultimately, how do we begin to, to, to handle those things in a better way? The next thing to consider is if you are dealing with depression. Obviously, isolation, when one feels that their emotions aren't in their own control or they veer towards negative emotions on a consistent basis, is going to lead to feelings of loneliness. If no one understands how sad I am, if no one understands how frustrated I am, if I'm constantly vacillating between anger and sadness, then I'm going to feel alone by result. Usually, these levels of depression are caused by, or can be caused, by uh, fixation on trauma. So if you've been through a traumatic experience, violation, crime, victimization, any sort of hardship, um, financially, emotionally, the end of a relationship unexpectedly, or any other number of traumatic life experiences, one can feel alone because... The misperception of the mind is that, uh, you know, no one else has gone through exactly what I've gone through. Therefore, I'm alone and having to deal with this by myself and no one understands how I feel. So the importance of finding someone to talk to, whether it be a coach, a, a, a minister, 
a counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist, anyone really is super important if you've gone through trauma and haven't quite worked through it yet. The last thing is dependence on technology. This is so big. You feel alone because the illusion of competition is propagated by social media. And so the more you spend time watching, let's say, bloggers on YouTube who are having more success in life than you are, or uh, you're watching people who might um, be, be you know happier than you are on social media, or they're posting about how they eat better than you do, or how they've had better vacations than you have. The illusion of competition leads to loneliness because it's like, well, they're having a good life. How come I don't get to have a good life? And that competition internally makes one feel isolated and alone. So hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.